Marshall knew that nothing lasted forever in life. There was an end to everything. Day turns to night, summer turns to winter, and life eventually becomes death. Marshall had never thought that he would deal with the concept of death at such a young age. But here he was his best friend's funeral. He tugged at his collar of his tux, trying to ignore the itchy feelings as he wanted to watch the others mingle or say their farewells to the open casket. There was a miracle that Ryder had managed to hire good enough morticians and doctors to heal Chase's body, so it could be something less- it was still somewhat scarring. But compared to what he and the other when the truck hit him, it was a miracle to even see his face clearly. Closing his eyes, Marshall felt a tears running return as he raised a paw to his heart in effort to stop the pain. But it did nothing. The memory of seeing his friend right there, clear as day, and he had been getting hit instantly, a second later to his doom, and it haunted him for days. The sight of Chase laying there motionless, with his body broken and bleeding in a state of ruin, and still managed to get a rise still of bile in his throat before he forced it down. The only comfort he took was that Chase died on impact and very little pain before he was gone. He glanced at the others who were just as miserable as him. Zuma was being comforted by a teary-eyed Rocky while patting the sobbing lab on the back. Rubble was being held by Ryder, who Marshall had never seen him cry so much as to today. It was surprise considering Chase. He was his first dog and his oldest friend. He, Chase, and Marshall had all started Paw Patrol together. There was always a close bond between the three of them, and Sky, Sky was there by his side, looking at Chase alongside of him. She had been the most supportive of him since Chase died, which was both a blessing and a curse. He had kept his feelings for Sky a secret for a long while, not even Chase knew of him. One night, when he had a nightmare, she came to him for comfort. He couldn't help but kiss her. That kiss was returned. And then the nightmare soon stopped. The team just didn't even know it yet, but they agreed to wait a while to announce their new love. It was awkward to suddenly have a girlfriend during the moment of tragedy, but there was often stories of lovers coming together during such times, and to think, I was about to all give up on asking her. He continued to watch citizens of Adventure Bay head towards a dark oak casket, surrounded by flowers of all kinds. He hadn't yet said his final goodbyes yet, but he was working towards it. When Alex and his grandfather finally left the casket in tears, Sky nudged him forward, which gave him the boost he needed to walk to the casket. Chase then lay inside the white velvet cover, dressed in Paw Patrol outfit, the way he would have wanted it to be buried. His police cap was positioned underneath his folded paws over his chest. Despite the painful death, he had been given... His face looked one of utter peace. Marshall didn't even know if there was even a heaven that they all went out or nothing awaited them in the great beyond. But that point was Chase felt no pain and was forever at peace. Chase, Marshall choked up a bit as he struggled to say something. He had given a speech earlier about Chase, but why did it feel so hard to do now? You are my brother, my best friend. I think... I speak for everyone when I say that there won't be any honorable or brave leader like you. Ryder, he's offered me to take the leadership of the team. I've decided to take it because I think you would have wanted it. Taking a deep breath, he stood there as straight as possible and saluted to the corpse. I promise I won't let you down, buddy. Take a good long rest and hopefully we'll meet again. He leaned down and kissed his friend's forehead goodbye before turning around to, to the others while waiting for the burial to begin. However, unbeknownst to Marshall, the pups or anybody there, a mysterious cloak figure walked towards the casket. It was an elderly English golden retriever with one pale eye staring at Chase with a toothy grin, and a set of teeth was missing a few too. She wore a purple cloak, the hood covering half of her face, as she strolled down forward as of on smoke. Nobody pay any attention to her, despite her standing out. She stared at the body and smirked. Oh dear, it seems that you have fallen into a terrible fate. 
haven't you? She slowly drew out the single item, a paw. A monkey's paw that was fully closed. And you left this, I'm afraid. Nobody escapes their fate or their sins. Not even death. She gently laid the cursed item right beside Chase's head and pillow and chuckled. Sleep well, my friend. Sleep well. And thank you for visiting my store. And with that, she left. Nobody noticed the Paul laying there in the casket. Not even the final prayers were said and the casket was closed. And Chase lay there in silence as he slowly was being buried. And he and the Paul would remain together. Both in life and in death. And that, my little pretties, was Paw Patrol, Monkey's Paw. A Paw Patrol creepypasta written by Havoc Hound. My final thoughts on this story? Alright, um, I first never actually heard about this story until, um, Sir Horror actually started narrating this story. Well, actually, before Sir Horror narrated this story, I remember Shadow Reader actually narrated this story back on his old channel before it was terminated. For some reason, though, I wasn't really sure when I would actually take a look at this story because, I mean, it has a really good concept. I'm not going to lie. The concept was honestly really good as well as the good grammar. I mean, I decided to take a look at this story and holy hell, this one was a dark Paw Patrol Cree pasta. I mean, the last Paw Patrol pasta I narrated was uh, Paw Pup's Life Lessons or something. That was written by the Shadow Reader and I did read part one of... Paw Patrol The Final Mission that Shadow Reader wrote, but I don't really know if I will be able to narrate the rest of it or the full story of it because Shadow Reader said it did get lost and I think it on his old laptop or something. I can't remember. It's been quite a little while. So, yeah. I mean, I know Shadow Reader just narrated chapter one again. I don't know when he'll narrate the other chapters, though. So, yeah, I'm not really sure when he'll be able to narrate the other chapters, but I hope he does plan to narrate the other chapters soon because it was a really good story. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It was a pretty good story for what... Um, it's a pretty good creepypasta. Like, I could definitely say the storyline of it was pretty epic. What I mean by that is, you know, seeing Chase, you know, going to, well a flea market and then sees this gypsy um well dog that apparently um you know basically said about a curse item called the monkey's paw and chase thinking you know it's a superstition when it clearly isn't you know the fact that the monkey's paw has like five wishes and every wish chase wished for it, it does have a consequence like mo some of the con most of the consequences in there had you know, dark, like one of them being Marshall dying and then Sky ends up taking her own life and then they come to life as zombies. And it all turns out that, you know, um, the monkey's paw item or something after the last wish was done, I think it just, you know, reverts back to, you know, what would have happened if Chase did not, you know, make any of these wishes or something. Chase ends up dying at the end. I mean... I mean, this is honestly a really well-made um, story. I'm not going to lie. This is absolutely a well-made Paw Patrol Cree pasta. I got to be honest. When I first um, heard a few chapters from S Sir Horror actually narrate this, I actually really do like how this Cree pasta went out. Now, I know I believe someone or maybe a few people did request me to take a look at the story, so... I decided, you know what, I'll go ahead and take a look at the story, and I honestly thought this story was good. It was a pretty good story. I mean, yeah, depressing, but it's still pretty good. At the same time, I know it was depressing as well, but it's still a pretty good story for how this, how the concept of it went out is just amazing. Like, I like the fact that, you know, um... The concept of it was pretty good and the good grammar in that. Also, the the author of the story, Havoc Hound, he also draws some fan art of, um, well, Paw Patrol, like, um, you know, Paw Patrol, Monkey's Paw story. I mean, I gotta give it a shout out to Havoc Hound. If he were to ever, or she were to ever see, you know, this story or the narration that, um... Sir Horror did. I wonder if they will um, 
I wonder if he or she or they would comment on this video and see how well made this story is. So, I mean, I do remember Shadow Reader narrate this story, but that was back on his old channel. And I wasn't really interested in Paw Patrol at the time. I mean, despite the fact that I'm not a fan of Paw Patrol, I really have to say the pups were, are cute. I'm not gonna lie. I'm considering it maybe doing more Paw Patrol related stories. Like, if you guys have a Paw Patrol related story you want me to narrate, um, feel free to send it in the comment section or something because I'd like to see them. And maybe I'll, I gotta have to maybe consider reading more of these stories because they're pretty epic. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, I guess with that being said, um, the grammar of this story is really good. I could definitely say that as well as. The sentence structuring, the paragraph structuring, I love the concept. The plotline went out smoothly. I mean, it was shocking at certain times, especially with the deaths and all that. And the fact that, you know, Marshall and Sky become zombies. I'm like, wow, that was pretty messed up, to be honest. I mean, if they were to adapt this into, like, an episode of Paw Patrol, there is... No doubt that they would never air anything like this, but seeing that this is a Cree pasta, I mean, it's pretty interesting. I could honestly see this being a real episode, but even if they do have this to be a real episode, it would not be aired to the public, obviously, because of the um, disturbing content that is in the story that you already know because, you know, you listen to my narration, so horrors and even... um. Shadows, well, Shadow Reader only narrated chapter one. I hope Shadow Reader does decide to narrate the rest of it. I hope he does hope to do the other chap parts too soon because, you know, I really like this story. And I recommend you guys check out um, this story. I mean, maybe there could be something maybe a little more added to the story. Like, maybe they could be, like... To put it bluntly, I don't really know what to say. But other than maybe if there was more added to the story, maybe the story would be somewhat interesting. Like maybe they could fix up, you know, maybe just have a better explanation on certain things. Like, you know, um, I actually do know that, you know, Sky took her own life and that. I mean, I could definitely say it's normally not necessary for, you know, characters taking their own lives like that or something. I mean, normally I wasn't really too fond of that idea, but that's the only complaint I have. It's not a major one, but it could be left out. That's all I can really say. Anyways, um, like I'm going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of the story would have to be a... I'm gonna give this one a 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because it's a well-made story. It's definitely worth to read. It, and I definitely recommend you guys check this story out. Um, it's on fanfiction.net, so yeah, I recommend you guys go check out this story if you haven't. You will you will definitely really like this story. If you're a Paw Patrol fan or if you're looking at, you know, certain Cree pastas pastas to narrate, this story is definitely you go your go-to. But anyways, with that being the case, and that being said, um, the only complaint I would have to say about the story, it's not a bad complaint, but I would have to say what could be left out is the fact that, you know, um, Skye taking her own life. I, I get that she's, you know, depressed and all that, you know, but that's the only thing that could be left out. Other than that, it's not a bad story. I, I really like it, kid. Despite that one issue I had with the story, I still found it to be enjoyable. And, yeah, go check out Havoc Hound's, um, fanfiction. This is on fanfiction.net. You will love this, um, Cree pasta if you happen to be a Paw Patrol fan or you want to look for a Cree pasta to narrate, feel free to do so. Anyways, what did you guys think about this Cree pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're brand new here to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.